welcome to today's video and welcome to my office. I am filming over here today. Um, this is normally where I work on most days, so I thought it would be fun to just do a video here and switch things up. I'm really excited about today's video because you guys have been requesting this non-stop. I think it is definitely my most highly requested video. So I thought it would be great to just knock it out and do it on YouTube because I really want to be able to walk you through things and explain them and show you how things work and the steps that I use them in. So yeah, it's all about my skincare routine. So if you're interested, like this video and just keep watching. So before I walk you through my routine, I want to explain my skin type just so you know the context. Um, you know, in which I use these products and whether or not it would be worth trying for you depending on your skin type. So my skin is pretty normal, um, but it's dehydrated. So the difference between dry skin and dehydrated skin is that dry skin doesn't produce oil, where dehydrated skin does produce oil, but it still has dry patches and surface flaky areas. So for me, I can get very oily and I have an oily T-zone. Um, I'm working today here at the office and I've been here, it's 428 now, so I've been here since about 9 a.m. So you can see my oils peeking through. Um, I've definitely got some shine, but it's not as crazy as it was in my teen years. I used to be incredibly oily all over. Now I just noticed my T-zone is particularly oily. However, I get a lot of dry patches and flaky skin um, around my chin area at certain times of the month, on my nose, and it was really hard for me to find the right routine and figure out the right products to use because on one hand, I didn't want to exacerbate my oils, so I didn't realize that hydrating my skin would actually calm my oiliness down. So I was using a lot of stripping, drying products, which then made my dehydrated areas worse. Um, and I was really scared of oils for a really long time. And so once I started hydrating my skin properly and incorporating oils, and really hydrating serums into my routine, I noticed my skin really started to balance out and it was producing less oil because it wasn't trying to overcompensate for all the stripping products I was using and it wasn't as dehydrated. So that's been a big game changer for me is just finding the right combination of products for me and incorporating chemical exfoliants. So chemical exfoliants, um, exfoliate your skin, but not with like the scrubbies and the grains and stuff. So like glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid. And that really helps turn over that surface dehydration, the flaky areas, the dry areas that I was always frustrated with because my makeup wasn't laying right on top of my dry areas. But I was still so oily at the same time throughout my T-zone. So getting my skin back into balance has really helped create this uniformity. And I feel like my skin is now one type and it's just normal dehydrated skin. So I think the easiest way to go about this is to go through my morning routine and then my nighttime routine because I do a couple of things differently um, and then there's definitely some overlapping, but I think it's just easier to show you what I do and why in the morning and then what I do and why at night. So we'll start with the morning because it's a little bit less complicated since I'm not removing makeup and I try to keep my morning routine a little bit more simple. Um, so I start with cleansing when I wake up and I know that some people don't believe in cleansing in the morning because you're waking up with clean skin, you went to bed the night before and cleansed hopefully all your makeup off before bed. So um, some people feel that it's just stripping and you don't need to remove your natural oils. For me personally, I like to start from a completely fresh place in the morning. I like to get all of my skincare from the night before off, any sweat and oils that accumulated throughout the night, and just start with a clean base so that all of the skincare I'm about to put on um, sinks in properly and just isn't layering over leftover product from the night before. I cleanse with this Carez Greek Yogurt Foaming Cream Cleanser. And I love this cleanser because it's so deep cleaning and you can definitely tell it's cleansing your pores and if you have that feeling like it removed everything, but it still has this frothy, creamy consistency that feels like it's nourishing my skin at the same time. So one of my biggest problems with cream cleansers is I feel like they leave this like film or residue over my skin and this does not do that but it's not so stripping that it gives that like window pain, like when you wash windows, that like you know, that sound. I know you know what I'm talking about. When you rub your hands, we've all heard it. 
and I just don't like that level of stripping on my skin, but I like that level of deep clean. So this does both, and I just think it's a really beautiful cleanser. It smells amazing. It just feels milky and creamy and gentle, but it really gets the job done. So I use this in the morning, and after that, I will go in with a toning mist. And I've been loving this Thayer's Natural Remedies Witch Hazel Aloe Vera Formula Alcohol-Free Toner Facial Mist in Rose Petal. The Rose Petal scent I find to be very soothing and anti-inflammatory for the skin. And it just is a really beautiful hydrating mist that's affordable. I get this at Whole Foods. Um, I feel like there's not much to it. There's no weird ingredients, no strange like stinging or scents. It's just a very mild, gentle toner that preps my skin for all the skincare I'm about to put on. So I just love this. I think that it's affordable. You get so much, it's gonna last you for a while. It's all clean ingredients, gluten-free, phthalate-free, uh, paraben-free, alcohol-free, rose water cleanses and tones. It does have glycerin, which is really hydrating, um, witch hazel, and aloe. So it's just really soothing and hydrating, and I think it's a really nice mist, especially for this price point. And then once I mist my face, I go in with an essence. And I didn't really know what essences were until a couple years ago. And I was reading some article on Korean skincare, and they were talking about um, all of the different steps that they do. And I think there's something between like 10 and 13 steps. And when I got to the part about essences, I was like, I don't even use an essence. What do, what's an essence? So I was doing some research and learned that an essence is really great for prepping your skin to absorb all of the skincare like serums and moisturizers and oils that you're going to put on after. I've been using this Tatcha Essence for a really long time. Um, this is probably my second bottle and as you guys can see it's pretty empty. But I just love this essence because I feel like it plumps my skin. Um, something about it when I press it into the skin just kind of almost like rehydrates it. Kind of like if you put dried fruit in water and it just plumps back up. That's how I feel about this. Um, with an essence, you definitely just want to sprinkle it into your hand and warm it between your hands and your palms and then press it into the skin. You don't want to put it on a cotton pad or your hands and rub it around. Um, that's really not the function. This is meant to infuse your skin with moisture and really just plump, hydrate, and get your skin receptive to the serums that you're going to put on. So I love essences because they make your skincare more effective and if you're going to take the time to put all this skincare on, it's nice to know that you're actually setting your skin up to absorb it. When I'm not using that essence, I recently discovered this newer essence and I thought it was worth mentioning. I haven't been using this long. I've been using it about a month um, when I don't want to use the Tatcha essence. But I picked this up in New York when I forgot my other one. Um, it's by Wal Mayung and it's called the Skin Elixir Secret Formula 1897 Royal Recipe All-in-One Liquid. And this is really interesting. It has like this spray thing and I'll, I'll show you. And it just kind of sprays out on your hand and you rub it between your palms and press it in. It smells really um, herbal. And what I love about this, it's a little more hydrating than the Tatcha Essence. So for the Tatcha Essence, I feel like it really plumps my skin on the spot, but for this Wall My Young Essence, I feel like it really hydrates my skin on the spot if I'm dry. It just feels softer and more supple. So I've been liking this, I've incorporated it. I don't know if I will repurchase the Tatcha or just stick with this one or keep using both, but um, I thought it was worth mentioning because I am really enjoying this product. And next after my essences, I like to go in with serums. and. I use different serums for the daytime than I do for the nighttime. For the nighttime, I like to go in with more of my active acid serums like lycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid, any sort of retinols I want to use. Um, just because I know that I'm sleeping, so I'm not going to be um, exposed to the sun during the day. And those type of serums can actually make your skin really sensitive. Um, to the sunlight and accelerate skin damage and make it just more prone to burning and premature aging. So I like to save those for nighttime when I know I'm not going to be exposed to the sun. But for the daytime, I like to focus on antioxidant protection because I know I'm going to be outside and I want to protect against the elements and hydration. So anything with hyaluronic acid, anything with vitamins A, C, and E, um, and just something that's really going to protect my skin and hydrate it so that makeup lays beautifully on top. So there's three serums that I love, and I use these sometimes all three, um, and I just layer them. 
putting one on, letting that absorb. The second one, letting that absorb. The third one, letting that absorb. Or I'll just go in with one or two, um, depending how my skin is feeling and what I feel like I need. So the first one I love to go in with is this Kypris Antioxidant Dew Quench and Glow. And what I love about this is it is so um, creamy. I'll show you the texture, but it's kind of milky. I don't know if you can see in the dropper here. It's more of a milky, white, creamy texture, but it just has a little bit of a thicker consistency to it. So when I feel like my skin really needs that extra hydration and it needs some soothing and it needs some care, I will go in with this serum for the daytime because I just think it provides that milky, soothing, cooling effect. And it's got vitamin C and E, which are really great for protecting against the environment. It's all natural, um, and I just find that it's a really nice base for the serums I'm gonna put on after because it makes my skin very soft and hydrated. The next serum I like to go in with is this Vintner's Daughter Active Botanical Serum. And this is a little bit of a different consistency than the Kypris Serum. It is clear, well it's not clear, it's like this yellow color that looks more like an oil. It's got more of an oily consistency to it and there's definitely some oils in here, but it's a little thicker than that. It's almost got a slight honey texture to it. It's got a little bit more thickness and gooeyness to it, but in a good way. I feel like this is a really nice product to use in the morning because it smells so floral and herbal. It really wakes you up and it's a very instant resolve product so when my skin's looking tired or dull and i just feel like it needs some revival if i put this on it instantly brings the glow back and that luminosity and i love this for times when it's like an emergency situation and i just really need some help with my skin i did read something online about there's 20 something botanical flower and plant essences in here so it's all natural it's got really great medicinal herbal ingredients and i feel like it's just a great way to protect your skin throughout the day because it's got so many antioxidants um, so this is another beautiful daytime serum that I've just been loving. I think that um, I enjoy this product the most just for the whole experience between the scent and the texture and the way it makes my skin look. It's just a very luxurious serum. And this is not cheap, okay? But I do think it's worth the splurge. I would way rather spend money on skincare than makeup. To me, like my skin, I will protect it because I am starting to age and I'm not liking it and I will do whatever the hell I have to do to keep it preserved and as youthful as possible. So for me, this has been a product that while it is pricey, it's worth it. The next serum is my latest discovery and I have loved adding this into my daytime routine and I find it layers really well with the other two serums. This is the iSun Phyto Infusion Facial Serum Age Defying Vitality, um, Wildcrafted Organic and Natural. So I actually discovered this. I was walking out of the spa at my husband's hotel and this brand had tons of products like on display and they sell it there now. So I had never heard of it and I just started playing with these things and what sold me on this serum was the way it felt on my hand. So this serum, as you can see, has a thicker, milkier texture, but it's thin. It's still runny and thin, but it's got this thick, um, silky texture to it that just glides on your skin and just makes it feel so good. I wish you guys could feel this right now. It feels amazing. So this last serum that I use is the newest to me and it's by a brand called iSun. I discovered this. I was walking out of my husband's hotel in like the spa area and they have tons of products from this brand for sale and I had never heard of it. So I started playing with them and what drew me to this was well, one, the description, it says it's age-defying vitality, phytoinfusion facial serum. Um, anything that's age-defying, I'm all about that life. I don't think it's too early to start at any time, and I'm starting to see some things change. I'm not loving it, so I'll do whatever I can to prevent or slow down the aging process. So I was playing with this, and the texture of this is just what really sold me. It has the silkiest consistency to it. I mean, I guess that's just the best word I can think to describe this serum. It feels silky. Like this one is really milky, this Kypris one. And this one is almost like honey, but this one has like a silk effect on the skin. It just makes your skin feel so soft on the spot. So I've been loving layering this and I find that these three serums work really well together. They don't fall up, they don't feel too heavy, they all absorb, so I feel like it's just lightweight when I'm putting them on one after the other. 
And this also has a lot of antioxidant protection. It smells very, very organic and wild crafted. It's got a lot of clearly like plant ingredients to it. But I just love that because I know it's protecting my skin throughout the day. So it's just an added layer of antioxidant protection with this extra benefit of the silky soft effect on my skin. So that's the final serum that I use for the daytime. And then I go into my moisturizers. So I typically use a cream during the day. Um, I like to hydrate before doing my makeup. I don't use a super heavy cream, but I don't use an oil-free lotion or anything too lightweight because I really want that hydration. And throughout the day, our moisture barrier becomes depleted. So I like to start out from a really hydrated place. And I think I talked about this during my very first Chit Chat Get Ready With Me video. This is the Indie Lee Squalene Facial Cream. And I'll just show you guys if you can see with my lights. I love this cream because it is so hydrating without being too thick and not absorbing. It like, it does the job of a heavy, thick, whipped cream, but with the texture, consistency, and absorption of an oil-free moisturizer. So I can put this on and 10 minutes later go on with my makeup and feel like I don't have this oily residue and my makeup's just sliding around and I look like a grease ball. I feel like it really does sink in, but it hydrates at the level of a much thicker, heavier cream. So this has been my go-to. I love this. It's really great clean ingredients and I just think it's a really beautiful moisturizer um, for most skin types because while it does hydrate, it's not too heavy. And finally, I will go in with an oil. So the function of an oil is to help seal in all of the moisture and skin care that you just placed on your skin. An oil will really prevent all of that from leaving the skin. The same way it's recommended that when you get out of the shower to immediately put oil on your skin, that's to seal the water into your skin from your pores being open in the shower and absorbing the water before it evaporates. So an oil will really just lock all of those serums and hydration into the skin so that throughout the day, it's not leaving the skin. So the oil that I go to most days is rosehip oil. And this is just, this is this brand is called Acure. It's organic rosehip oil. I get it at Whole Foods. You can just go on Amazon and find any organic rosehip oil. I love this because it has such a low pH, rosehip oil does, and it really alkalizes the skin and brings it back into balance. So if you're feeling like your skin is off or you're just having one of those weeks where you're like, what's going on with my skin? Rosehip oil may be a great solution for you because anytime I've got redness on my cheeks or chin and I just feel like I'm inflamed or something's off, I go in with this guy and I just put a couple drops on the back of my hand and press it over my moisturizer once it's been absorbed. And that just really helps seal all of my serums and skincare in for the day. So I love this. It's non-comedogenic. It's super lightweight. Like I said, if you're oily, do not be scared of oils. I was scared to use oils for the longest time. I've never broken out from this. I've never had an issue with it. Um, and it's helped my skin be less oily because my skin is getting all of the hydration it needs. And this is making sure it doesn't leave my skin. So this is my final step. Okay, let's go in with my nighttime skincare routine now. So there's a lot of similarities, but there's a couple things that are different. So the first thing I do is remove my makeup and I always make sure to do this step. Whatever it is, when I get home, I don't care what time it is, what the circumstances are, I am getting the makeup off my face. I have noticed that this has been such a hugely important step in my life. I think we've all gone through our college years, of sleeping with our makeup on, wondering why our skin sucks, wondering why we're broken out. Um, and I will never go back to that place. I am such a firm believer in removing all of your makeup from your skin. And I am a full face of makeup every day kind of girl, so I know that I need to get it off my skin. Um, the first thing that I do, I don't use a lot of traditional makeup removers just because sometimes they can really sting my eyes and I know that they have some chemicals in there and it just, I, I just wanna keep it simple. So more often than not, I use argan oil and this is just an organic Moroccan ar argan oil. This is an aromatherapeutic version in citrus ginger, uh, but this brand is called Acure. I just get it at Whole Foods. You can use any organic argan oil that you like, but I just put a couple drops in my hand and I go through and start breaking down my makeup. And while I do this, I like to give myself a facial massage to just prevent any swelling and puffiness and drain out the lymphatic system at the end of the day. Um, all along here on your jawline, even down here on your chin, this big muscle here above your eyebrows, 
into your cheeks and your smile lines and just really get the blood flow moving. Um, I just find that I wake up less puffy if I do this at night and it's a really enjoyable part of my process. So I massage this into the skin to break down the makeup. And then I take a micellar water on a cotton pad. So the one I've been using currently is the Kudali Micellar Cleansing Water. Um, this says three in one, remove makeup, cleanse, and tone. I don't use this for anything other than just removing the rest of the oil residue and makeup residue on my skin from breaking it down. Um, so I just use that on a cotton pad. I like this. There's lots of micellar waters on the market. I wouldn't say like I'm obsessed with this one particularly. They all pretty much do the same thing to me. Um, I just look for something that's soothing, has clean ingredients, and doesn't make any like stinging or weird things happen around my eyes. So I've been using this lately. And then I go in with my Carez um, cream cleanser that I use in the morning, but I use it on my Clarisonic. I think this is called the Mia Fit. Um, I'm not sure exactly what model this is, but I'm pretty sure it's called the Mia or the Mia Fit. I'll link it below. But I love this, um, this, these bristles. I think that this particular brush head is for like deep cleaning, but I just feel like it really exfoliates and gets all of the grime and makeup off my skin much better than my hands can. It's just such a great deep cleaning tool. So I only use that at night just because I have so much more to remove uh, with my cleanser. And then I like to go in with this Thayer's Witch Hazel Spray, um, this alcohol-free toner again. And I spray this on my skin, but I also spray it on a cotton pad and really work it in. Just to remove any other makeup that cleansing may have missed. Most of the time my cotton pad is clean, but there have been some times, especially like around my hairline here, or like, you know, down here where you miss some makeup bits. And it's nice to know that you're really getting everything off. And then I go in with my essence. So either this Tatcha Essence or the Walmayok Essence that I told you guys about. I love these. I just press it into the skin the same way that I do in the morning. And then I like to go in with my serums. I like to go in with my more active, resurfacing, chemical exfoliating serums um, that are a little bit more heavy duty at nighttime. And like I said, I just know that I'm not gonna be in the sun, so I don't worry about my skin being too hypersensitive. Um, and I know that it's really working overnight so that when I wake up, I have fresh, clean baby skin that feels like it's been exfoliated and soft. And it's just a great canvas for makeup. So the one that I would say is my most important, um, and for me, this is the thing that I've seen the biggest change in my skin since I started using, is this Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum. And this is so amazing, you guys. If you have any texture on your skin, and I'm not talking just acne, I'm talking little bumps, unevenness, um, any texture at all of any type from anything, this will just somehow slough all of that away and you wake up and your skin is so smooth. And over time, like, I have just noticed my skin become a completely different texture. And there was a time that I was using a heavy eye cream and had these little milia white bumps under my eyes. This completely removed those. Um, any time that I'm, it's about that time of the month and I'm getting any sort of like breakups that haven't quite surfaced, but I just see them starting to pop up. If I use this, it completely just smooths it back out. This serum is a highly concentrated glycolic acid serum and glycolic acid is really just gonna continually turn your cells over and slough your skin off. So it's like exfoliating, but without the like physical beads. Um, I love this. I think it is such an incredible thing to have in your beauty cabinet for those times where you just really need to get your skin rejuvenated and renewed and start fresh. This just really, really clears it up. I adore this serum. I can't imagine not using this serum. It is, it is incredible. So I highly recommend this. And the other active serum that I really have been loving, this is a newer discovery for me. This is the Tata Harper Resurfacing Serum, Daily Dose of Glow. And I love this serum because it does a similar thing that the Drunk Elephant Serum does, but it's a little bit more gentle. So if I use the Drunk Elephant Serum too many nights in a row, I can start to notice my skin feeling a little bit raw, a little bit um, inflamed. And so if I start working this into my routine when that happens, I feel like it does the same thing, but it's more hydrating and more gentle. So the texture of this is different. The Drunk Elephant Serum is a clear gel, and this is a milkier consistency. You can tell it has some oils in there, 
and it's just a little bit more nourishing to the skin. So I like using those as my resurfacing serum, and when the Drunk Elephant one becomes too much, I switch over to this guy. And then the nights that I don't use either of those serums, I use a retinol. So let me preface this by saying that retinols should never be used with a glycolic or lactic or salicylic acid. No AHAs or BHAs should be used in conjunction with a retinol because it will inflame your skin. A retinol over time really resurfaces your skin. It promotes cell turnover, um, it prevents wrinkles. It's one of the most potent ingredients on the market, but it can definitely sensitize your skin. And then going in with acids on top of that can just be a bad combination and really overwork your skin. So I use this on three nights of the week when I don't use either of those. So this is the First Aid Beauty Retinol Serum 0.25% Pure Concentrate. And 0.25 is not a ton. So I had a SkinCeuticals like 1% Retinol Serum a while ago and my skin did not like it and it made me realize I did not take retinol as well. It was so red and flaky for like two weeks from using it twice. My skin was just peeling, it was just not good. So I was really scared to keep using retinols and when I saw this it says sensitive beginner and it's only 0.25. So I thought that this would be a really nice way to try to dip my toes back into the retinol pool again and see how it reacted and it's been amazing. I've had no reactions to this and retinols are not like an immediate benefit type of product. You don't see results overnight but a month later you'll start to notice like dark spots have faded, little wrinkles are slightly softened and things just overall look brighter and tighter and more youthful. And I definitely experienced that with this serum. I love it, I think it's a really great gateway into retinols if you're scared to try them or don't know how your skin's gonna react. And I'm gonna try to build this up to like every other night of the week, but right now, three nights a week, is working really well for me. So I use this when I'm not using either of those. And then finally at night, I will go in with some sort of acne treatment if I feel like I'm breaking out or have a breakout coming on. So I love this Kypris Clearing Serum Balance and Calm. And what I love about this is it's not super drying and stripping like a lot of acne treatments can be. Um, I've definitely had some in the past where you know it's like a spot treatment and you put it on and it like burns a hole in your face and I'm not looking for that. I feel like when I use this, it doesn't dry out my entire face but it definitely calms down the breakout, soothes it, it's less red in the morning, it's less inflamed, it's less sore, um, it just shrinks a little bit in size. So I find this to be a really great, um, just overall acne serum that you can use, not just up to spot treat, but all over the face that's not gonna completely dry your whole face out. So that's my final thing, and I only use this when I feel I need it. I use a different moisturizer at night than I use during the day just because I want a little bit more hydration. I know I don't have to go in with makeup, so I don't mind if it's a little bit heavier and a little bit more slick. So I've been loving this Herbivore Pink Cloud Rose Water Moisture Cream. And what I love about this is the rose water scent is so soothing to use at nighttime. It just really calms me down and gets me ready for bed. But rose water is also so anti-inflammatory on the skin and it is just such a nice thing to smell and use and put on at nighttime. I just adore it. It's very thick. The name Pink Cloud is perfect. It definitely feels like a pillowy, moussey, whipped cloud. Um, so it's definitely thick, but it does not break me out, which I love. And if my skin is like as dry as it ever gets, and I put this on at night, in the morning it is so luminous and dewy and glowy and soft. And I just think that this is a great investment. It really works. It's not like a La Mer price point. It's all natural clean ingredients, but it really feels so luxurious and hydrating and rich on the skin. So I love using this at night. And then just like the morning, I go in with an oil. So the oil that I've been loving, this is bougie I got. Um, you guys are gonna think I'm such a high maintenance biatch. This is the Tatcha Gold Camellia Beauty Oil, and I don't know if you guys can see, but it's definitely got like some oil flakes in the bottom here. It's a really beautiful product. So Camellia Oil is non-comedogenic. It's a very lightweight oil, but it just has so many antioxidant properties, and it's one of those oils that's rich enough that it really does lock the moisture into your skin, but it will not break you out, which I love. I mean, 
Chameleon oil has so many benefits um, in skincare. It's been used for years and years. I put it in my foundation formula because I love it that much. It just is so silky and luxurious. But the gold in here, like, why would you not want to use an oil with gold flakes? It just makes it that much more fun. So I totally love this. The scent on this is amazing. I love Tatcha products. I think that they're really, really beautiful. And this just smells so lovely. So I like to put this on my skin and press it in, and then I put the rest on my cuticles, my knuckles, and my hair, um, any leftover on my hands at night, and that kind of seals my nighttime routine. Okay, now we'll talk about masks, and I don't really have a schedule with my masks. It's not like on Sunday I use a certain mask, Monday I use a certain mask. I kind of just use them for troubleshooting specific problems with my skin as they arise. So I typically do masks at night just because I have the time to leave them on and let them really do their job. In the morning I'm usually a little bit more rushed and trying to get out the door, so I don't really have time to sit for you know 15, 20 minutes and let a mask work its magic. But um, I will sometimes if I do have time. So there's two categories of masks that I keep in my cabinet, and one is hydrating and one is detoxifying. So if I feel breakouts coming on or any sort of texture, and I know that my skin is just clogged or I've been wearing a lot of makeup and I'm noticing some blackheads or any sort of weird thing, I will go into a detoxifying mask. And the two that I love the most have a different consistency and texture and I use them for different things. So the first one is the May Lindstrom Problem Solver Warming Correcting Mask. I know that this jar is like bossy, but this is actually warming. Like when I put it on my skin, it feels warm on your face. I don't know how, it, how but it works. So this is interesting, it's a powder. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I don't wanna spill it over, but it's a powder. And you put it on your hands and mix it with a little bit of water, and it forms this paste that starts to look like mud. And then when you put it on your skin, it just kind of starts to warm up, and I feel like that really opens up my pores and lets all of the um, ingredients kind of go into the pores and suck out all the dirt and grime and any sort of debris that's sitting in there, blackheads seem to be really diminished. So I love this mask. I think it's a really interesting, fun thing to use. And then when I've got like a really active breakout that I feel like I need like serious spot treatment style of masking, I go in with this Indie Lee Clearing Mask, Purify, Detoxify, and Nourish. And this is like a traditional clay mask. So this is like the masks that we're all used to using in high school that we'd like get at CVS. I remember I used to use like the St. Helene Mint Julep Mask the St. Ives, like apricot mask, but like any sort of clay like mask, but it's got this like, it's white, it's very like astringent smelling, and it's just one of those masks that feels like it's really gonna like nip ac acne in the bud. If I put this on a blemish, it stings, I feel like it's working, I notice it's like way smaller, way less inflamed, way less aggravated over time, so I just love this mask for like serious breakouts when it's like I need to do something now. And then my hydrating masks that I use, I have two of those. This first one I'm gonna talk about is a newer discovery for me and I incorporated it. I have two girlfriends that created it and I was like, oh great, I'll try that. And I took it on a trip to New York and left it in a hotel room. Um, and when I got home, I missed it. And that was when I knew like, oh wow, this mask has really become part of my routine. So this is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. And what I love about this is it's very light for a hydrating mask. So you can put this on and literally just tissue off the excess 15 minutes later. You don't even need to rinse it. And I feel like this just immediately helps my skin. This is like the most instant result mask that I have where when I'm traveling a lot or I've been having late nights and not sleeping or maybe not eating the best, this will just replump my skin and revive it and just give that glow back instantly. So this is a great like quick fix style of mask if you just need something on hand for those times where you're like, okay, my skin is just looking horrible, help me now. Um, what I love about this too, I was talking to my friends Lauren and Mariana who created this and they said that they use it every single night. And that makes me feel good just knowing it's not so heavy that it's gonna congest you over time. A lot of hydrating masks can just be a lot. And I like knowing I can use this as much as I need it and it's not gonna build up and clog up my pores and I can just really have it on hand for those times, like on a trip if I wanna use it every night. I like knowing that I can. 
And then when I'm really going in with like the big guns, when my skin is just so parched and I'm just so dehydrated, I go in with this Pharmacy Honey Potion Renewing Antioxidant Hydration Mask. And this is like, a, this is a brand new jar. This is probably my fourth one of this. And I know that this sounds bizarre, but it smells like bacon. I know I'm not making this up. This is a true bacon smell. It's like a smoky bacon scent. If you try this, will you let me know below, do you think it smells like bacon? I am I do. I love that it comes with this magnetic spatula because you don't have to dip your hands into it, which is, it's always more sanitary to have something like this. So I always appreciate when brands include something like this. Um, but honey is super antimicrobial, antioxidant. So it, while it purifies your skin, it also deeply hydrates your skin. The honey is just so soothing. It's like a melting wave of calm over your skin. It just feels amazing going on. It sits beautifully. So I like to use this when I can just have a couple of hours even sometimes. Like if I'm gonna watch a movie or a TV show or do work at night, this is what I go in with when I just know I have some time to really let it sink in and hydrate. And my skin just is so baby soft after. I cannot say enough good things about this mask. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know that you were really curious about it and I get lots of questions all the time about my skincare routine. So it was really important to me to do this on video so that I could properly communicate to you instead of just trying to like respond to a DM on Instagram with you know some brief explanation when I really wanted to dig in here and walk you through each step. So I hope that you guys loved this. I hope that it was helpful and informative for you and I hope that you learned something. And please let me know what you'd like to see in my next video. I'm so happy you came into my office with me today. It was so much nicer than being here alone. And I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Thanks for watching, bye.